In this video, we're going to look at combinatorics. That basically just refers to all the different ways that you can group and arrange different amounts of objects. There are four main things we're going to look at in this video. We're going to look at the fundamental counting principle. The fundamental counting principle says that, you know, if you have so many of one thing and so many of another thing, and so many of something else, and so on and so on. And you want to know how many different ways you can group these things, pair these things. Then uh, the fundamental counting principle says you take the number of the first amount, you multiply it by the number of the second thing you have, you multiply that by the number of the third thing you have, and so on and so forth. So if you said, I have four shirts and three pants, how many different outfits can I make? It's kind of... Uh, from coming from that. Factorials. Factorials refer to the number of ways that you can arrange a given set of objects. So that would be, I have six books, how many different ways can I arrange them? What you would do in this case is you would do six factorial, or the number factorial. And that just basically means that number times the number one less than it times the number one less than that one, and so on and so forth until you get down to one. So the example for six, it would be six times five times four times three times two times one. That would be six factorial. The last two uh, are combinations and permutations. Combinations refers to grouping of things where order does not matter. I have the same three things no matter what order I pick them in. The formula for finding combinations is n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. And you can see this written with a few different notations. So you might have c with an n there and an r there. You might also see it in big parentheses with an N over an R like that. It means I have N total things and I'm going to choose R of them. Now permutations, on the other hand, order does matter. So with permutations, picking things like a president and a vice president and the secretary, the order you choose them in matters because if you choose them to be president, they're not going to be chosen to be secretary. So for a permutation, we use the formula n factorial over n minus r factorial. This is for permutations if you have n and you're choosing r. So you'll notice the difference is you're not dividing by r factorial. That dividing by r factorial in a combination takes away all the repeats that you would have. And so you have a lesser amount or a lesser possibility. So let's go ahead and use some of these. Um, they're really a lot easier once you see them in a situation. All right, so for her aquarium, Susan can choose from four types of fish and three types of plants. If she chooses one type of fish and one type of plant, how many different aquariums can Susan set up? In this case, we know the number of one thing and the number of another thing, and we want to know how many different ways we can pair these up. So this problem ends up being a fundamental counting principle uh, problem. Basically, it says you take the number of the first thing, and you multiply that by the number of the second thing, and so on and so forth. In this case, we only have two things. So I have four types of fish, and I have three types of plants. So when we multiply these out, we end up with 12. There are 12 ways that she can set up her aquarium. All right, how many different ways can I make a four-digit simple passcode for my iPhone? So the simple passcode just deals with the digits on the touchpad. And the digits are 0 through 9. So if you think about how many digits those are, what those digits are, you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 things that we can think about. 
So if we want to make a four-digit simple passcode for my for your iPhone, you're basically going to be um, pairing things. It's going to come down to a fundamental a fundamental counting principle problem again. Another way that I like to think about these are as slot problems because I have four slots, right? I have one, two, three, four slots. And in each slot, I can put a certain amount of things. I want to use my digits, and it needs to be a four-digit one. So for the first one, I'm going to have ten possibilities. I could have a zero there. I could have a five there. I could have a seven there. I have ten possibilities. Now for the second digit, for iPhones, you actually can repeat. So again, you have ten possibilities. For the next digit, it's the same. And for the last digit, there are also 10 possibilities. I actually did this with my phone. I checked it. I, I had 555 as 5 as my passcode. And um, it's not that anymore, FYI. But in that case, you can have repetition. So for this fundamental counting principle, we have 10 ways to do one thing, 10 ways to do the other thing, 10 ways to do the next thing, and 10 ways to do the last one. So basically, all we have to do is multiply all of these out, and we're going to get the number of passcode possibilities that we have for our iPhones. So when we actually carry out this multiplication, we end up with 10,000 ways that we can make a passcode for our iPhone. So I want to order a sandwich, and I can add two toppings. I can choose between lettuce, tomato, avocado, and cheese. How many different topping options do I have? Well, I'm going to be choosing some toppings, but I'm only going to select a couple of them from all of them. So this means I'm going to have either a combination or a permutation. In this case, I have a combination because if you put two toppings on a sandwich, you have those same two toppings on the sandwich, whichever order you put them in. So this is a combination, and I have four options and I am going to choose two of them. So if we use our combination formula, we know that it's n factorial, the total number I have, so that would be 4 factorial, over r factorial, 2 factorial, times n minus r factorial, which is 4 minus 2 factorial. So we can simplify this a little bit and I end up with 4 factorial over 2 factorial times 2 factorial. You don't really need those parentheses. You can just say 4 factorial over 2 factorial, 2 factorial. Now, I'm going to actually write this one out, but for all the rest of them, I'm just going to depend on a calculator uh, to do them. So 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1 times 2 factorial, which is another 2 times 1. So we can go ahead and you could multiply them all out or you could remember all that stuff that you did before about canceling common factors. We end up with 4 times 3 over 2 times 1. That's another common factor. So we end up with 2 times 3 over 1. And we have 6 ways that you can arrange your sandwich toppings. The members of a track team want to choose a team captain and someone to organize their equipment. How many ways can two people be selected from a team of 10? So here again, I have a lot of things, but I'm only going to choose a couple of them, which means it's either a combination or a permutation. Now in this case, I'm going to choose a captain and someone to organize the equipment. So these are two separate jobs. So the order I choose matters, which means it's a permutation. In this case, I have a permutation. I have 10 possible people, and I'm only going to choose two of them. So when we plug this into our permutation formula, we end up with 10 factorial over 10 minus 2 factorial, which is 10 factorial over 8 factorial. Now at this point, you can go into your calculator, and you can have your calculator figure this out for you. Or you can think about it this way. 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 dot dot dot. 
And 8 factorial is 8 times 7 times 6, dot, dot, dot. You can see that you're going to have a lot of cancellations. In fact, everything through 8 is going to cancel out, which means at the end of the day, you're just going to have 10 times 9, or in this case, 90 ways that we can choose our captain and our equipment specialist. Again, you can go ahead and use your calculator and do 10 factorial over 8 factorial, but sometimes it's faster just to do it in your head. The door code to get into a super secret laboratory is six digits. The first three digits are all odd, and the last three digits are all even. Odd digits can be used more than once, but even digits cannot be repeated. How many possible codes are there to gain access to this laboratory? I like saying it that way. All right. So this is, reminds me of the iPhone problem. So if we remember there were all those digits from the iPhone problem. Okay, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. We are going to use some of these digits, not all of these digits, and some can be used more than once. So again, I'm thinking, okay, well, I have six slots that I need to fill. So this comes back to the fundamental counting principle again. In the first three slots, I have to use odd digits. So, one, two, three, four, five. I have five possibilities. Now, I have to use another odd digit in the next slot, but I can repeat it. So I have another five possibilities. And for the next one, I also have five possibilities. Now we move on to our even numbers. So in this case our evens are 2, 4, 6, and 8. And 0 is not actually even, and there's lots of mathematical arguments about that. We won't get into it. Let's just stick with our 4. So the even digits, well, I have 4 possibilities for the first one. But they can't be repeated. So if I use 1, I only have 3 possibilities left for the next one. And then if I use 2, I only have 2 possibilities for my very last digit. So for our passcode, we can use the fundamental counting principle, multiply all of these guys together, and figure out how many different codes are possible. And in this case, we end up with 3,000 different codes. How many different ways are there to arrange the letters in Klein? Well, this is just a matter of arranging different things, so this is actually a factorial problem. I need to know how many ways I can arrange, it looks like, one, two, three, four, five things. So to arrange five things, I do five factorial. And in this case, five factorial, remember, is five times four times three times two times one or you can be lazy and use your calculator and figure out that there are 120 ways to arrange the letters in Klein. How many different ways are there to arrange the letters in Mountain? Alright, this one's a little bit different, but we can start it the same way. We know that we have a certain amount of things and we're going to arrange them, so we do need to use a factorial. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I have 8 things I'm going to arrange, 8 factorial. However, in this case, I see that I have a letter N that repeats twice. So we need to factor out all the different ways that one N could replace the other N, because that's not really a different arrangement. You still have N in that slot. So if you think back to the combination formula, to get rid of all those repetitions, we had to factor out or divide by r factorial. And in this case, our r, or the ones that are repeating, are n. So yeah, we have eight factorial ways to arrange them if each n was a little bit different. However, since our n's are the same, we have to factor those out. So we have to divide out two factorial arrangements because those different arrangements of n don't count. So we have 8 factorial over 2 factorial, which you can multiply out by doing 8 times 7 times 6, and so on and so forth, 
Or you can just use your calculator and you can very quickly find out that there are 20,160 ways to arrange the letters in mountain. A scientist has seven plants to use in an experiment. One plant will act as the control, and three will be subjected to environment A, and three will be subjected to environment B. How many ways can the biologist choose the plants that will be in environment B? This could be like an experiment for my house. How long will it take them to survive at Miss Hirsch's place? Um, not long. Uh, all right, so we have seven plants, and one is going to be the control which means we're really choosing from six plants. One's already gone. And all we care about are environment B, so we're going to choose three plants to go into environment B. So we have six, we're going to choose three. This is a combination or a permutation. So when you, to figure out which it is, you go, okay, does order matter? If I choose three plants, to go in environment B, does the order I choose them in matter? Does it change the situation? Well, not really. If you put all three plants in environment B, it doesn't matter which one you picked first. So in this case, it's just a combination. We have a combination, and we have six, and we're going to choose three. Remember that other notation? You might see six, three. It all just means the same thing. It means we're going to use the formula six factorial over 3 factorial times 6 minus 3 factorial, which is 6 factorial over 3 factorial times 3 factorial. And we're going to be lazy and use our calculator and figure out that there are 20 ways to choose our plants for environment B. A board of trustees is made up of 10 people. The board is choosing a chairperson, a secretary, and a publicist. If they have already chosen the chairperson, how many ways can they select a secretary and a publicist? Alright, so I already picked the chairperson, which means I only have nine people that I'm dealing with in this case. And I'm going to pick two of them, a secretary and a publicist. So I have nine, I'm going to pick just two of them. The easiest way to do this would be to use a combination or a permutation formula. So since one person is a secretary and one person is a publicist, the order does matter. This would make this a permutation problem. I have a permutation of 9, choose 2. So in this case, when I fill this into my formula, I'm going to have 9 factorial over 9 minus 2 factorial which is 9 factorial over 7 factorial. And if you remember that little shortcut from earlier, lots of things would cancel out. Or you can go ahead and plug that into your calculator, and you can figure out that there are 72 ways that we are going to be able to choose our secretary and our publicist. Back to more letters. How many different ways are there to arrange the letters in banana? I like this one because I like to say banana. One, two, three, four, five, six letters. So we're going to arrange six things and we would think, okay, well that's six factorial. But don't forget you have to factor out those repetitions. I have, oh, I have a lot of repetitions. One, two, three. Three. There are three A's, so I have to factor out all the different ways you can arrange three things, which is three factorial. And I have one, two N's, so I have to factor out all the ways you can arrange N two things, or the N's, so that would be two factorial. So yeah, there were six factorial ways, but once we deal with all the repetitions, divide out three factorial and two factorial, we're going to end up with a mere 60 ways to arrange our letters. Mrs. Marshall has 11 boys and 14 girls in her kindergarten class. She needs a group of representatives to meet with the principal. How many ways can she select this group if she needs to have at least one boy and one girl in the group? 
All right, well, let's start out breaking it down into pieces. We need to have one boy and one girl in each group. We know it's just a group of representatives, so it's probably going to have something to do with combinations because the order won't matter. So let's think of all the different ways she could do this. She could have one boy, and then the, all the rest of the three were girls. So she satisfied her requirement. She could also have two boys and two girls. That would also satisfy the requirement of having one boy and one girl. Or she could have three boys and one girl. Although why she would do that, who knows. Um, and that again, it satisfies the requirement. So she has some different options, and what we need to do first is think about how many ways she can deal with each option in isolation. So if we start with one boy and three girls, let's just look at the boy case. She has 11 boys, and she can choose one of them. So I'm going to use this fun notation for combinations. I have 11, and I'm going to choose one. Now, we also have the girls that we need to take care of, and we have 14 of them, and we're going to choose three of them. Now, all of the ways that we can arrange the boys go with all of the ways that we can arrange the girls, so we can multiply these, and it sort of becomes a fundamental counting principle problem. All the ways to have the boys, and all the ways to have the girls. Alright, now let's look at the next one. Two boys. I would have 11, and I would choose 2. And for two girls, I would have 14 and choose 2 of them. And we could multiply, just like uh, we did in the first one, so that we could see how many different ways we could put these two sets of boys and two girls together. Now in the last option she has, she could choose 3 boys. So she has 11 of them, and she could choose 3 of them. She has 14 girls, but she's only going to choose one of them. And again, we multiply all of the ways for the boys with all of the ways for the girls so that we can figure out the total number of ways in that case. So let's set up our formulas. We have 11, and we're going to choose just one. So the combination formula means I have to have 1 factorial times 11 minus 1 factorial. We're going to multiply that by the girl formula, which is 14 factorial over 3 factorial times 14 minus 3 factorial. And we have this next case, so let's look at the next case. I have 11 factorial over 2 factorial times 11 minus 2 factorial. And then multiply that by the girl case, which is 14 factorial over 2 factorial times 14 minus 2 factorial. My cases are getting mixed up, sorry. And then in the last one we have 11 over 3 factorial times 11 minus 3 factorial times 14 factorial over 1 factorial times 11, sorry, 14 minus 1 factorial. You knew what I meant over there, I know it's a little messy. Alright, so simplify a little bit further so that we can go ahead and put this in our calculator. We're going to have 11 factorial over 1 factorial times 10 factorial multiplied by 14 factorial over 3 factorial times 11 factorial. And then for our second case, I'm going to end up with 11 factorial over 2 factorial times 9 factorial and 14 factorial over 2 factorial times 12 factorial and then the last one times 14 factorial over 1 factorial times 13 factorial all right, whew. now we can go ahead and we can use our calculators to figure out kind of where we're at. I'm going to move to another page so that I have a little bit more space. All right, so I copied my stuff over, and we went ahead and got our calculators out. I know you guys all did that. And you got, let's see, 11 for this one times 364 for this one. 
And we got 55 for this one times 91 for this one. We got 165 for that one times 14 for that one. All right, so for the first case, which was um, one boy and three girls, we would have 11 times 364. So we would have 4,004 ways to do that one. Then in the middle case, which was two boys and two girls, we would have 55 times 91. We would have 5,005 ways to do that one. And in the last one, we would have three boys and one girl, and we would have 2,310 ways to do that one. Good thing that one's the smallest. All right, so just making jokes, boys. We love you. Um, so we have 4,004 ways to do one option and 5,005 ways to do another option, and 2,310 ways to do the third option. And Mrs. Marshall can have any of those options. So at the end of the day, what we're gonna do is just add those various combinations together to figure out the total possibilities. So in this case, we do all of these added together, and Mrs. Marshall, lucky duck that she is, has 11,319 different ways that she could select representatives for her principal group. Wow, it's a lot of ways. But when you get down to it, you can kind of see how all of this stuff comes together. We have combinations, we combine them with the fundamental counting principle, and then just some simple common sense. You have lots of different ways and you can put them together. All right, so let's do a little bit of a recap now that we blew our minds on that one. Our recap. So the very first thing you need to do is determine what type of situation you have. Is this a fundamental counting principle problem where you can use the slots or a factorial problem like the letters? Um, or is it a combination or permutation where you can go ahead and use those formulas It sometimes it makes them a little easier? After you figure out that, well, you need to make sure that you have it correct. So you need to remember that a permutation order matters. Order does matter in a permutation. But in a combination, order does not matter. Which is kind of funny because we call, we say we have locker combinations, but in all actuality we have locker permutations. Because the order does matter, as those of you guys know who have been locked out of your lockers when you mess things up. Alright, so once you know exactly what you have, you're going to set up the situation using the appropriate formulas and take any special circumstances into account. For example, when we have repeating letters or we already picked the chairperson, so he's not in the running anymore. Even though the number was 10, we really only use 9. And so on and so forth. You need to be careful about those because they're easy to just miss once you get in the groove of using the formulas over and over again. So and then you evaluate your formula and consider the reasonableness of the solution for the situation. Sometimes if you erroneously use a combination or permutation uh, formula, you can tell that you used the wrong one based on what the situation was and when you kind of try to think it through to see if that number makes sense. So that's everything with the combinatorics. And this was all related to what was in a presentation that you guys all have. So be sure that you go back and look at the presentation as well. And try some of these problems on your own. Don't wait for me to calculate them all out. Desmos does factorials.